the map of Iran. Put your finger right in the middle of it, where the deserts are. Look carefully. What you see is the name of a very small city called Anorak. A two-hour drive from Isfahan brings you to Anorak, a small town with old homes made of adobe and a climate typical of the desert. You can see the, the buildings are made out of the earth and so it's really like um, the city is quite integrated into the landscape and that's what something, something that we really liked about it. It's very special as a city. Coming from Europe, we don't, we don't see that kind of city. Uh, it's all, all small alley, all with, uh, with mud, very special construction. There is some uh, nice castle as well, some, some old town. It's in the middle of the mountains. It's very good, very good impression. Climbing one of the several hills surrounding the region is all it takes for you to catch a glimpse of this small town. The most important historical monuments in Anorak are four watchtowers on top of four hills surrounding the city. Settlement in this region dates back to the Sassanid era, but the city of Anorak as we know it today was built by a man called Muhammad Pahlavan back in the 16th century. Today the city is surrounded by the ruins of an old wall and four watchtowers that were built to keep bandits out. Now you always hear about Iran being a country with an ancient civilization. Here is some hard evidence. Only a 45 minute drive from the city of Anorak takes you to one of the oldest mines in Iran, Nakhlak mine. As you've probably noticed, there is little agriculture in this region. However, there are many mines located near Anorak. Nakhlak, a lead mine, is the largest active mine near the town, which produces nearly 6,000 tons of lead per year. With its intertwined network of tunnels, the mine itself has a history of over 2,000 years. This makes it one of the oldest underground mines in Iran. It is also the reason why it will soon be turned into Iran's first mining museum. Something I found particularly interesting about the city of Anorak is its Museum of Anthropology. This museum was established by the people of the city, and all the items that you see here are items that have been donated by those who have been living here for centuries. چیزایی که خاص تو این موزه در واقع میشه ابزارهای معدنیشان مثال زد حالا شاید ابزار دیگه تو کل ایران باشه ولی ابزارهای معدنی که اینجا هستش این موزه را شاخص ترش میکنه The people of Anorak are very proud of their culture and they are adamant to preserve it This can be seen in every corner of this humble anthropology museum Caravan sarais of the cities are one of the places that you usually visit if you're into historical monuments. In Anorak, though, whether you are this kind of person or not, you will come to the caravan sarai because it has been converted into a bed and breakfast. شهر آنارک در زبان قدیم به نار و سینه معروف بود. نار و سینه در واقع از آنار و سینه کوه. The people who live here also speak their own special dialect called Anoraki. So if you ever happen to come here, you will have the unique opportunity to get to know more about Iran's ancient civilization. Gizumi Shahmadi for Iran.
forests of the Caspian Green Belt, one of the oldest ecosystems on the surface of the Earth. This explosion of green has been reflecting its mesmerizing beauty for thousands of years. This is a small part of the Hirconian forest that has continued to thrive for millions of years. Scientists say that the ancestors of these trees came to existence more than 40 million years ago, and today the southern coasts of the Caspian Sea are heir to this ecological heritage. In a country where more than 90% of the land is dominated by deserts and rugged mountains, this picturesque thin line on the northern side of the Albers mountain range in Iran's north is more like a dream than reality. However, parts of this amazing green belt is covered by mystery, at a place where nature subtly changes its direction and gives way to its frightening side to appear. In our series of programs in Mazandaran province, we heard about a place which, according to the locals, is very spooky. And that place is situated somewhere in the heights of Sisangon Mountains in Nosha County. In fact, the locals believe that that place is haunted. So once again, our curiosity took us to a place rarely visited by the people to find out whether there is any kind of weird phenomenon or anything strange going on in that place or not. حدوداً 35 تا 40 کیلومتر از نوشهر فاصله داره راه دسترسیش تقریبا میشه گفت یه راه خطرناک یه مقدار سخت با توجه به اینکه باطلاقیه نمیشه داخل دریاچه رفت To tell you the truth at first sight I felt that spine chilling wave passing right through my body as I stepped into the place and what was expecting me out there the ghost lake here trees have grown differently. The strange and hallucinating shape of their branches, the rugged terrain which leads to the area, and the occasional sound of wild animals and petrified wood breaking off the trees may be reasons behind naming the place as the ghost lake by the locals. Whether this place is haunted or not, the atmosphere is quite scary enough to make you believe there is something weird about this place. There is something in the air which says, don't go any further, there's fear and danger ahead. Even this fella seemed to want to discourage us from going any further by just saying, <coughs> Despite all the anxiety that was worsened by a bumpy road, we were finally there. Welcome to the Ghost Lake. This large pit was once a hollow part of the forest where many trees used to grow, but as time passed, rainwater slowly filled it to form a basin. The trees in the pit gradually suffocated as a result. Once the inhabitants of the forest, these dead trees are like ghosts wandering on the water surface. <laughs> چیزی ندیدن از ارواح و یا مثلا امثال این چیزا ولی شاید سرصدای حیوانات وحشی باعث شده که چون ترسناک بوده اینا فکر کنن که اونجا یک روحیه یک ارواحیه ولی چیزی رو کسی ندیده بر اساس باورهای گذشته این دریاچه رو به نام دریاچه ارواح نامگذاری کردن I asked one of the locals in the area whether ghosts at the lake were for real or they're just an illusion. The trees reflecting themselves on the still surface of the water add more excitement to this daunting atmosphere. Well, I must confess that it does feel kind of scary here. And there may be some temptations to spend the night out here by the fire and inside a tent. But no, that is something I don't want to do. I'd rather spend the night at home. But still, there are lots of things to enjoy here, such as the beautiful weather, wonderful landscapes, a hot cup of tea by the fire, and of course, a bunch of good friends. I'm Mehdi Kazani for Iran.